Hello everyone, I'm Jinjinx, and I like Monster Hunter and I like math, so here's some Monster Hunter math. Quick disclaimer, in these videos I will explain a lot about math and calculations in the context of Monster Hunter. However, even if you aren't interested in the math or being able to do it, understanding these concepts like EFR, elemental damage, hit zone values, and motion values is an essential aspect to high level play in Monster Hunter World. When high level players discuss the game, this is the kind of terminology they will be using. I do apologize about the delay on this video, I've been fighting off a cold for the past week, but I am finally better and I am ready to talk about some math. Also a huge shout out to everyone for supporting this channel and this series, I really never expected to receive such an amazing reception for you all, but we're already at 666 subscribers? But seriously, thank you all so much for your support. Moving on, in this video I will be discussing how damage is calculated in Monster Hunter World with the assistance of my assistant, Tuna. Hey everyone, I'm Tuna. In this video we'll be talking about motion values, or how much damage each attack deals, as well as hit zone values, or how much damage a monster takes. In our previous Monster Hunter math video, we explained what EFR or effective raw is and why it is the most important stat to look at when determining the raw damage of a build. It's important to know what EFR is to understand the rest of the video, so if you haven't watched that yet, click the link in the top right to watch it right now. Seriously, it, it's important. The rest of the video will make much sense otherwise. Okay, so I know about EFR now, but that's not the whole story, right? I mean, just because I'm at 520 EFR doesn't mean I'm doing 520 per hit. So what's the story on that? Well, that's because we need the last two parts of the puzzle. Motion values and hit zone values. Let's start with motion values first. So motion values are the percentage of your true roll any particular attack deals. These are set to each attack for each weapon class, they do not change. For example, here are all the motion values for Greatsword that I personally tested at one point and calculated. Let's take for example the level 1 charge slash from Greatsword that has a motion value of 48 aka 48%. This means that regardless of what Greatsword I use, this attack will always have a motion value of 48. In general, slower weapons have a higher motion value to compensate for their slower attacks. For example, the Greatsword's true charge slash at max charge has a motion value of 211, which also happens to be the highest in the game. Conversely, weapons that hit faster have lower motion values to compensate. Okay, I think I get it. So that means I just multiply my true raw by the motion value and I get my damage, right? Well, not quite. So let's take a look at the entire damage formula for raw damage. Now we'll ignore that last one because that is a whole different topic and for all intents and purposes we can consider them a static bonus. So now we know what the first four are, but the last piece of the puzzle to understanding raw damage is the hit zone value. So hit zone values are essentially how much damage a monster takes from different damage types when you hit that specific body part. Each body part or hit zone on a monster has 8 different hit zone values. One for each of the three different raw damage types. One for sever damage like long swords or great sword. One for impact damage like hammers, sword and shield shield bashes or great sword tackles and one for shot type damage like bows and bow guns. And then finally, one for each of the five elements, fire, water, thunder, ice, and dragon. Like motion values, these hit zone values are percentages. For example, let's take the training pole in the training area. The hit zone value for all three raw damage types are all 80, and for all the elements, they are all 30. By the way, this is heavily skewed towards raw damage's favor. The only things in the game with something around an 80-30 hit zone value ratio are Dodo Gorma's rock-filled face, Great Jagras' inflated belly, and Anjanath's nose, wings, and also Kolf Taroth. In fact, Kolf Taroth has a 50 hit zone value to Thunder and Ice depending on phase she's in, so it's pretty skewed in Element's favor for her. So now we can simply plug this hit zone value of 80% from the training pole into our formula. Now, since our Greatsword build here has 300 true raw and white sharpness, that means on a level 1 charge slash we deal a total of 152 on a non-crit hit, and a 213 on a crit. Also, quick side note, some sever weapons have a sweet spot where if you hit the target with a specific part of the blade, you deal about 3% more damage. So if you've ever seen your damage numbers increase when you're hitting a training pole on the exact same attack and build, that's probably why. Do I really need to know the math? The game already tells me how much damage I do. It's true that knowing the math and being able to do it isn't really that necessary. 
However, understanding hit zone values is very important because it can be crucial to understanding what weapon to use on what monsters and what hit zones to attack. So for example, let's look at Valhazak's head. So first off, an important thing to know with hit zone values for raw damage is that only hit zone values of 45 or above count as weak points. Hold on, when I use hammer or shield bash on Val's head, it gives me orange numbers. Doesn't that mean it's a weak point? Well, no. This is another case of unintuitive design on Capcom's part. What colored your damage numbers are is actually based on the combination of your sharpness and the hit zone value. This means that at higher levels of sharpness, you will actually get orange numbers on hit zones that aren't actually considered weak points. And yes, this means weakness exploit does not apply to those attacks. The build I'm using in the background here has 50% affinity plus weakness exploit 3. So on weak points, this means that I will be critting 100% of the time. However, you can see during this big bag combo, that is definitely not the case, even though the numbers are orange. However, there is a caveat to this. Monster hit zone values can change when you break their body parts. So, after breaking Val's head, you actually deal twice as much damage to it with blunt damage, and you also get to use Wex for that juicy 50% affinity. Now, as you can see in the background, because the head is broken, the Big Bang combo is critting on every single hit. And also doing max deeps. Also, yes, even though it says Val is 3 star weak to dragon element in the Hunter's Notes, you don't actually deal any dragon damage to Val's breakable parts before breaking them. Now, another more practical concept to understand is rounding. See, after all the calculations go through, raw damage always rounds to the nearest whole number in Monster Hunter World. And this is very important to understand because on low motion value attacks, rounding can cause a lot of damage loss if you skill in more raw attack. This is most noticeable on a lot of bowgun ammo like pierce and spread, as well as bow arrows. Let's take spread 3 for example. It has a motion value of 8 per pellet and fires 7 pellets per shot. Without accounting for rounding, this means it has a motion value of 56, which is actually very high for a bowgun ammo. However, because of rounding, it can actually potentially deal less damage. To illustrate this, let's take a theoretical example. So let's say that you're shooting a certain monster in the head with spread 3. After calculating in the motion value of 8 per pellet and the hit zone value, let's say you're dealing about 21.6 damage per pellet. This rounds up to 22 per pellet. Now let's say you were to skill in some extra attack boost into your build, and this brings it up to 22.3 per pellet. This still rounds to 22 per pellet. This means that those extra points and attack boosts were effectively wasted in this matchup. Of course this won't always be the case, however this does illustrate why on these kinds of builds it's even more of a priority to focus on your crit modifier through affinity and crit boost. Extra attack has the potential to be wasted damage. Now if you can manage to hit crit boost 3 in 95 or 100% affinity anyway, then if you can fit it into your build, you might as well just go ahead and slot in more attack boost at that point. Okay, that's good to know. But where can I find this information online in case I need to look it up again? Well, I hate to keep beating a dead horse, but Honey Hunter's World is the best source for this kind of stuff. Every single piece of equipment, including all the stats, are in there, every hit zone value, and you can also use the damage calculator to do all the math we just talked about for every attack on every weapon. And to top it off, Honey updates very frequently. Unfortunately, the motion values used in calculations aren't publicly available, but honestly I'd much rather have an absence of information than rather be working with misinformation. And again, no, this isn't sponsored, I just thoroughly appreciate Honey's work. And I will shill it at every possible opportunity because I use it almost every damn day. Now every other source online I've seen is either unupdated, incomplete, or just has plain incorrect data about motion values and hit zone values. This unfortunately includes some of the more popular choices like Karanico. A lot of the motion value data is incorrect, so I wouldn't recommend using it on Karanico, and also the hit zone values haven't been updated since before Devil Joe came out because they're from the guidebook. I'll make sure to bookmark Honey's Hunter World for future reference, and I have a better idea of how raw damage works. But tell me, when are we going to get to Elemental? Well, we'll be discussing that in depth in the next video we have coming out very soon. See, in order to fully delve into elemental damage, it's important that we first understand what EFR hit zone values and motion values are. And well, now we do! If you enjoyed the video and you learned something new, be sure to like it below. 
and we have our video covering elemental damage coming out soon, so be sure to subscribe and press the little bell icon down there and you'll be the first to know when it does come out. And if you did learn something new, or you have a topic you'd like us to cover in the future, be sure to leave a comment below. Alrighty then, that about covers it hunters. Happy hunting and Tuner and I will see you in the next video. Bye!